like taking action on what we're going to dig into today, which is the 12-week year. Get more done in 12 weeks than others do in 12 months. It's a book, or it started with a book by Brian Moran. And we have a special guest on today. His name is Norm Mead. And Norm is our 12-week year coach in our EXP organization. And uh, Norm leads quarterly 12-week year uh, sessions to help folks do exactly as the book details. And the, the simplest summary I can give to this is it's about compressing down what might be your 12-month targets or your one-year targets uh, into a 12-week sprint and doing that over and over and over. And by doing that and by shortening the window that, uh, that you look to take action and, and implement and, and, and uh, hit targets, um, you create a little bit of urgency and, um, and, and the good kind of urgency that, uh, that will hopefully get you into action. And, and um, you know, if you implement the strategies in here, I think you'll find that um, you'll be getting more done, you'll be more efficient, you'll be more effective, and um, you'll be able to hit your goals and targets, whether they be personal, fitness, financial, business, like, you know, you, you, it's a framework um, that you can apply to really any area of life. So with that said, Norm, um, if you can uh, steer the ship here, sure. let folks know a little bit more about the 12 week year. And then I think it would be great if we also spend some time brainstorming and masterminding for those that are curious or interested and, and thinking about, you know, what, um, what certain targets might make sense and, and, um, and, you know, how, how they may um, utilize this framework over the next 12 uh, weeks here, the first quarter of 2023. Absolutely. Hey, Josh, thanks for inviting me. I'll tell you what, it's really pretty cool because as I look around the audience and everything here, I see a bunch of people that have already been through the 12 week year and are going through it again, which yep. is which is really cool. We um we don't plagiarize the name the 12 week year in, in our in our group. The uh we call it express success. And we happen to use the 12 week year as part of the system as we move forward. And and Josh hit it right on right on the head. I mean, you know, it's not we're not eliminating annual planning or five-year planning or 10-year planning. You know, that's all part of, of what we do. You know, we all have to do mind dumps. We have to, we have to uh, do our vision boards and we have to do all that stuff. We have to figure out what's important to us. You hear all the time people talking about the why. And when you find out what the why is, then you can bring it down to the, to the reality and the finite right now. Um, I don't want you to, you know, uh, Brian Moran just sent me a, a a note the other day, and it said, you know, you know, annual planning is dead. Maybe it worked a hundred years ago, but it doesn't really work anymore. And and the thought behind that is that we are moving so doggone fast, and our technology is changing all the time, and our economy is changing, and everything is changing all the time. That we have to be nimble and flexible. We have to be able to focus. And one of the key elements that we use in the twelve week year is periodization. The Eastern Europeans used periodization um, back when they were going crazy in the Olympics and winning absolutely everything. And what it boils down to is that you take one thing and one thing only and you work on it until you are proficient at it. The 12-week year does that. So many people that get involved in our, in, in our group, they have all these wonderful goals and God love them. I'm so happy for them. So, cause so do I, you know, we have all these great things, but we have to bring it down to the finite and say, what is the one thing that I need to do over the next 12 weeks? That's going to better my life. Now, as Josh said, it might be, it, it might be your personal goals. It might be your health and fitness. It might be a business goal. It doesn't matter. It's your goal, right? But you have to reduce it to the ridiculous is what I like to say. And, 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 a, and a great example of that is, is, is probably um, weight loss. Most of us 
can understand weight loss, weight gain, health, fitness, you know, all of those things. And, and we pretty much all end up with some kind of a, a health and wellness goal every year. For those of us that, that do um, do affirmations and things of that nature, you know, you're, you say, well, I'm going to lose a whole bunch of weight this, this year. Well, that's not a goal. That's an idea, right? The goal is I'm going to lose this many pounds this year. Well, what happens to you? You start off so excited and wonderful and, and you're moving forward. And then May <laughs> starts, you know, you start doing some other things and maybe you're getting invited to a few more cocktail parties. And, and then you get into July and you, you know, your goal was X and you haven't even achieved A. <laughs> so you start to get depressed with all that kind of stuff. So we get rid of that. So what we try to do is take that big goal break it down into small little sessions. And we'll just take, for instance, weight loss, okay? Let's just say you want to get in shape and you want to lose and, and you want to lose 20 pounds. Well, 20 pounds doesn't sound like a lot. Well, it is a lot, right? Right? But let's just say that we break that down to a 12-week year. And we say, well, what's it really going to take in order to lose a, to lose those 20 pounds? Well, over the 12 weeks, that means I only have to lose 1.7 pounds a week. I mean, I don't know about you, but that number 1.7 is a whole lot easier for me to swallow than 20. So we break it down to the ridiculous. And then we get to, then we have to take that goal and we have to look at it and we use things called lead indicators. What do I have to do every single day in order to accomplish 1.7 pounds a week? What is it? We're going to redisplace that. So how, one of the things we're looking at is how many calories do we consume a day? So we have to focus on that. So we have to get a, 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 a some sort of a method to be able to uh, watch our calories and then log them because we have to know what we're doing in order to be able to, to move forward. Because if something's wrong, we need to be able to fix it quickly, right? So we want to fall, but we want to, we want to be able to be caught quickly. And then how, so how many calories, my calorie, my calorie intake, I know very well is I, I, I need 1500 calories a day. That's what I need. So you can find that out online. It's really pretty simple to do. How much exercise do you need? In, in, in my particular situation, I do 6,000 steps a day and I, I ride hundred miles on my bike a week. So those are, that's my exercise. So, so, if well, some people, I, I, <laughs> clapping your hands 100 miles a week it's not that hard but <laughs> you got you have to get into that habit of doing it right you know and then how much water do i intake right 64 ounces of water you know i've got a 24 ounce jug and i make sure i, I drink it three times a day it's pretty simple but the key to that whole thing is that i log every single thing that i do so that i can pay attention to where i am because anybody here got a swimming pool you own a swimming pool and by chance you know if you ever walked outside and you saw your swimming pool is green well guess what it didn't get that way in a day and it's not going to get clear in a day <laughs> so we have to know make sure that we're doing all of the steps and we have to really really focus in on on that on that um goal set or i'm not saying the goal setting but but uh, organizing and and um, writing down what it is that we need to do daily activities that are going to get us to that point. So it's the same thing with business. It's the same thing with personal. You have to sit down and take a yellow pad of paper and write down, do the mind dump, figure out what is it that you really want to accomplish. Now, I'm going to tell you that, I, and I tell everybody, Winifred, you've heard this before. I tell everybody, one goal. That's it. You get one goal when you start off your first 12-week year. I will tell you that with the first 12 week year that I did, I had three goals and I had four that were kind of off to the side. So I had like seven, you know, you think my mind wasn't messed up. I mean, I couldn't, I, I failed miserably. And I will tell you that most people do fail miserably when they get put too many goals down and they're, they're trying too hard to focus on too many different things. That's why the, like the Eastern Europeans did the periodization, you know, one, one week or one month or, or, or one day um, I work on upper, upper body. One day I work on lower body. One day I do this one. We do the same thing with the 12 week year. We take, what is it that we need to get accomplished? What is the most important thing to us at this particular moment? How are we going to handle that? And we focus on that. Hyper-focus. Stay very, very vigilant 
and make sure that you know where you're going and make sure that you're keeping a record of everything. The great thing about the 12-week year, the system that we have set up gives you the ability to do a master plan. This is what I need to get done in my 12 weeks. And then to be able to break it out and do individual week plans. So you know on Monday morning what it is that you have to accomplish on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you can keep score. And the scoring is a huge part of that. So those things are all very, very, very important. But the most important part of the entire process is accountability. You guys have heard accountability so many times, I guarantee it, you know, uh, oh, I'm going to hold, I, I had I had one person tell me, well, I, I'll hold my, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. I'll hold myself accountable. And I said, well, you know, you can do that, but you can't be part of my 12 week year. <laughs> in order to be in the Express Success program, you are required to have an accountability partner. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You must have an accountability partner. And, and I don't mean, we've all experienced accountability in our life, I'm sure. Um, you remember the, the father that ruled with an iron fist and, you know, the teachers and the bosses that are, that just, you know, you will do it or I will fire you. That's not the kind of, the kind of accountability that we're after. The kind of accountability that we're after, I like to call joyful accountability. You see, you're going to pick an accountability partner that is going to be the, not, not necessarily might be a spouse, might be a good friend, might be another realtor, might not be another realtor. You know, who, who knows? It doesn't really make any difference as long as you find an accountability partner that you can be honest with and they can be honest with you. Because every week you're going to have a meeting with your accountability partner. And you're going to tell them what your score was. Now, you guys don't know. Some, some of the folks do because they, they've scored. They know you're going to say, well, yeah, I scored, I scored 65 uh, last week. Well, you know, the playback to that is you had a possibility of scoring up to 100, right? Well, guess what? 65 is better than 55, right? So first of all, it's congratulations. You scored 65. That's, what, that's great. So let me ask you a simple question. What, what kept you from scoring higher? You already know the answer to it. Now what you do is you share that with your accountability partner. And then your accountability partner and you have the ability to sit down and talk about, well, what is it that I need to do? Or how can I help you score higher on this goal that you've stated and said that you it's incredibly important to you? The American Society for Training and Development Studies did a study. And they say that, you know, if you have an idea or a goal, you have about a 10% chance of achieving it. So that's good that you have a 10% chance. If you have an idea or a goal and you decide that you will do it, see, there's a difference between just having it and then deciding you're going to accomplish it and go after it. Your, your uh, possibility of, of achieving uh, success in that is about 25%. If you decide you'll do it and then you pick a time when you're going to do it, you decide when you're going to do it, your 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 viability of 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 success goes up to 40%. So we're really going up quite a bit, right? So then if you have all of that and then you plan, you plan it, you know, we all plan our vacations much more than we plan our lives, right? So if you plan this goal, you actually sit down and take the form, write down the master plan, write down the weekly plan, figure out what you're going to do every single week for the 12 weeks, you you increase your possibilities of success to 50%. So that's pretty good, right? But the key to the whole thing, again, is accountability. Because they come up with, the if you find an accountability partner, a specific person or a group that is going to help you be accountable to yourself, because it's not being accountable to them. It's you being accountable to yourself. Your success rate goes up to 95%. Why aren't we all sharing our goals with people and sharing uh, this joyful accountability with other people and helping to enjoy their success and, and them helping to you to enjoy your success? So that's the way this whole system works. We're very fortunate in, in that we have done this now for about, um, I think we're three full years into this. So we've done this quite a few times. I have the the largest group of, of, of EXP agents um, that I've ever had. I, I have 54 um, that starts tomorrow. 
So if, if you wanted to join our group tomorrow, you couldn't because I can't talk to more than 50 people. You know, I'm just hoping that that many people stay on. But we, but we will have another one coming up um, and, and get started. So that'll that's all things that you can, you know, get involved with. And, and I'll make sure Mike gets all the information that he needs if anybody needs to find out about uh, how they can get involved. Um, and uh, of course, Josh has been on it. Um, I, who all do we have on here? We got Harry was on here. Um, who else? James Brown's on. Winifred's on, you know, all kinds of people that are on here that have, that have joined it. So they've been through it. They're, as a matter of fact, I believe they're all signed up to start again on tomorrow, which is really going to be cool because we're going to, we really have an exciting group of people that we're going to move forward with. We have a whole new system that we're working. I mean, it's the same system. We just kind of polished it up a little bit um, and help them come up with what their actual goals are. Now, if, if you don't have the book, I'll make sure that there's a link in uh, in, in um, for Mike so that you can order the book. Um, one of the other things that we talk about a lot in Express Success is is a journal, and and I I do a thing called three to one journaling. Three things you're grateful for, two thing two uh, affirmations, and one big win. Write it every day. Um, have a little little book here that we use don't have to use a book to do it. You can use a sheet of paper. It doesn't make, don't, don't let this stand in your way of journaling. <laughs> you can use this to journal. It doesn't make any difference. Just write it down, but it's incredibly important to write it down. Get it out of your head, get it down on paper, and then it becomes a record. So as you're moving forward, it's a really, really, really a cool thing. I have several of these books. It's really a cool thing to look back five years ago and look at what I was thinking about in January five years ago and what was important to me. And it really helps you uh, fulfill your goals as you move forward because you might find something here that you were really, you were really uh, grateful for and you haven't really gone after that too much, you know? And maybe it's time to get it back into your life. So I really, I really think that three to one journaling is, is a is a big plus to help you stay aware of the things that you need to get done and things that are important to you. Um, so anyway, our group is great. We do it on we do it uh, on a, a, a weekly Zoom meeting, kind of like you guys do here. This is really the coolest thing. And uh, of course, Josh is the uh, he's the man. You guys have got the the right group here. There's no doubt about it. But if there's anything that I can do to help, um, you know, I'm here. Um, I'll make sure Mike has got all the contact information, and you guys can get a hold of me, and we can have a conversation. Go through Josh, have a three way conversation, which would be absolutely great. So if, if you're a member of our group, um, we have special situation that we, we work there. If you're not a member of our group and you'd like to get involved, we have a way to do that as well. So um, let's open it up for conversation, John. Yeah, what do you so, so um, to, to, to summarize for you know what, Norm, get back to whoever invited you and they can make the connection, whether it's a, a three-way call with me or Norm, um, you know, whether it's exploring becoming part of our organization and, and getting access to Norm or is exploring other ways that you can get help and support outside of this. I want to tie this to something I mentioned during last week's session, which is instead of creating New Year's resolutions, commit to creating new positive habits. And the 12-week year is really a formula. And, and what Norm is doing is really a formula to making those habits a reality, right? To, to a, a scientific process for creating new positive habits in your life. Um, uh, another, I'm just gonna throw out one other resource as an add-on, which I think ties incredibly well with the 12 week year and express success. And I mentioned it last week as well, which is atomic habits. Mm -hmm. And, um, I haven't actually listened to this yet, but I saw that the author of that book, James Clear, um, there was, uh, he was on the Tim Ferriss podcast last week, Tim Ferriss Show podcast, which I, I, I mentioned pretty frequently on these. And um, uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Tim Ferriss. He has made an, an incredible um, uh he, he has affected my life positively in many incredible ways, and I've never met him, um, but uh, his books and, and um, his, his podcasts and so forth. Um, and, and so tying those together, I think, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of synergy there of the habits 
are uh, what drive the, the leading and lagging indicators, right? Having those, those habits, right? Getting into the habit of, of walking, of getting those 6,000 steps a day and, and biking 100 miles per week. Um, getting in the habit of staying at whatever, you know, I don't know if you're doing, you know, calorie tracking or whatever, but um, creating the habit of sending a Friday email newsletter each and every week to your database, getting in the habit of texting on Tuesdays. And, and you know, which is why I, I've, um, you know, we, every every Tuesday morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, we do Texting Tuesday, and I've probably missed three or four in, in two plus years. And I'm not saying that to brag. What, so so here, here's an example of one of the concepts Norm mentioned. That session is my own built-in accountability. I do them live. I live stream them. I tell everyone we do these every week. And in doing them, I'm actually doing the work. And there may not be, you know, in every type of habit or, or goal or, or target that you have, there might not be that, that way to build that in. But for me, that's, that's built in accountability. There's an expectation now that I'm going to do that every week. I've created that habit such that, you know, we, we just don't ever not do them unless, you know, except for extreme instances. And um, so anyway, um, questions, comments, thoughts, or, or ideas to, to clarify. And I have some ideas to, to, to poke and, and, and uh, clarify as well, if not. Uh, what is the name of the book? So Yvonne, what we've been talking about today, um, Norm ha offers uh, Express Success Coaching, which is modeled after this book, The 12-Week Year get more done in 12 weeks than others do in 12 months by Brian Moran. Um, Yvonne, Yvonne was late. Um, what I was also mentioning is a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And they the reason I was mentioning them is they, they work very synergistically because really what this is is a scientific process for creating positive habits, uh, habits that then lead to you hitting targets or goals that you set over a 12 week period or a, you know, a quarter uh, period. Um, bah, bah, bah. let's see here. Well, so one thing I, I thought I would take a minute to, to dive a little bit deeper on, which is, I, I feel like it's something that sometimes people get tripped up or stuck on with, with this 12 week year, which is the scoring. Okay. And I want to try and I'm going to take a stab at trying to simplify it. The scoring is simply tracking your weekly actions that you've proactively or in advance identified as the things you're going to do to hit your targets and then scoring yourself each week. Did I or didn't I? Did I send my Friday weekly email newsletter? Did I participate and send text messages per texting Tuesday, right? And I'm just tying those in for Norm. Did I hit 6,000 steps each and every day, did I bike 100 miles? And, and it, it's, it's yes or no, right? Um, and so it's, it's, it's a way to track your actions, the actions that will drive the leading indicators and that consequently will lead to the lagging indicators. And, and the, 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 the way I think about leading and lagging is process versus results. Process versus results. Doing the right things that will generate the results. So um, let's tie it to, I wanna sell more houses this quarter, okay? In the next 12 weeks. Well, you may say, um, you know, I wanna sell 12 houses or six houses or three houses. The number is irrelevant. That number, is a lagging indicator. That is a results indicator. The process indicator would be I'm going to take these actions um, or, or the, the leading or process indicator, I'm going to take these actions uh, which will help me hit that 
lagging indicator, that result number, right? And when we're talking about selling more houses, there are certainly actions that drive it. But I think the biggest sort of uh, leading indicator there is appointments, right? Because it's virtually impossible to take a listing or sell a house to a buyer if there isn't some kind of appointment, a Zoom appointment, a coffee appointment, whatever it is, right? I actually had two coffee appointments Saturday morning. One with somebody in my sphere of influence. Uh, they This year they are selling their house, a million dollar-ish home. They, uh, they want to downsize or right size, uh, probably looking at buying something five or 600,000. And he, he wants to buy a few rental properties. Like I'll take that coffee appointment every day, right? Every day or certainly once a week would be great. And the other appointment with uh, was with a potential first time home buyer and just wanted to sit down in person and kind of talk through it, right? So without those appointments, we're not going to get to the lagging indicator of actually, you know, having the client and selling the home. So I don't know. Does that make sense? Uh, questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas from the group? So I'm going, well, to steal, I'm going to steal your process. Uh, to what a great way to explain it, Josh. I mean that 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 absolutely is what a leading indicator is. Um, and 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 too many when so many people look at the results or the goal at, at the end, and they don't realize what the process is to get there. And I'm not. And, and we don't. We don't. We we're not looking at the final goal. You know, that final goal was to sell four houses in, in 12 weeks. That, that's not what we're looking at. We, we, we want to know what is it that we need to do? We know that we do, we've identified that. How are we going to move forward to get to that result? And we're going to get the result at the end, right? But all we're going to, all we're going to, to score is the process, which is just beautiful. So Susan asked lagging and, and, or what? So the lagging indicators are the actual results we're after. I want to sell four houses this quarter, six houses. I want to take 10 listings this quarter. That's the um th that's that's what uh, you know, according to this way of thinking, the 12 week year way of thinking is the lagging indicator. The leading indicator would be or indicators would, would be I'm going to take these actions in order to generate these appointments uh which then would lead to those lagging indicators. Another way to think about it, the way I um I love, I, I, you know, I coach a lot of different sports. I love sports and athletics. I just think it's a wonderful metaphor for life. Um, I am a huge Nick Saban fan. I'm not necessarily an Alabama fan, but I'm a huge Nick Saban fan. And he constantly is talking about process versus results. They don't ever focus on winning the football game. They don't ever focus on winning the football game. They focus on during the week, winning the next rep, winning the next rep. During the game, they focus on winning the next play. And if they stack enough of those up, the lagging indicator or the result of the football game, more often than not, will end up in their favor. Now, I know they didn't make the playoff this year, for those of you that are college football, but they were just barely out of it. And then they ended up hammering the team in, in their bowl game, right? So, it's, it's about winning the next rep, winning the next play. And if you do enough of that, if you stack enough of that, let's take it back to selling houses. You may do all of the right things. You may take all of the right actions towards the leading indicators. Growing your database, nurturing your database. You have direct control over those actions. You don't have direct control over when someone is ready to list with you or buy with you. So you may do all of the right things for an entire 12 weeks and your goal was to sell six houses, but you only sell four. That's still a win. And if you continue to do that over time, it might mean that, that the next quarter, you sell eight, 10, 12, 15 houses because you're stacking, you're, you're stacking wins, daily actions, creating habits, um, and, and, and you're letting go of the things that you can't control. Because let's face it, 
You cannot directly control clients' motivation. Have you ever tried? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't work, right? You can't, you can't manipulate them. And, and, and when you try to, or if you try to, you are more likely to lose the business than you are to, to, uh, you know, to hang on to it, right? So the more you push for people to be ready, willing, and able on your time frame, the more you're pushing them away and making them less likely to do business with you when they're ready on their time frame. Um, so that was a little bit of a uh, a rant there, but other thoughts or ideas? Hey, oh, Jack, Jack, raise your hand. Go ahead, buddy. Sorry, I'm in the car now. Um, yeah, all good, all good. I didn't just, see it. No. Just to you know, solidify what you're saying to everybody you know, lagging and leading indicators. Let's be real. This industry is not difficult. If you are getting listing presentations, you will get listings. If you get listings, you will get buyers. If you get buyers, that's side money because, you know, listing agents control the inventory. If you're confused about what indicators, what leading indicators you need to be focused on in this business, there's a whole lot you can say about social media and, you know, being out there or like you coaching and, you know, doing the, you know, texting Tuesdays and everything, but to simply do the job and get the numbers and get the transactions, you don't need to go any further than I need X amount of listing presentations per week to get one sellable listing a week. If you can do that, everything else can be stacked on but you'll be just fine in doing it from a place where you've got some money in the bank and some weight off your shoulders. Great. I, I, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't have said it better, especially when it comes to the listing side of the business. And, and, and for some of you, you may not, you know, th this may not resonate with you and, and it may not be the, the best fit for you, just the way you operate. But if you can take away a few things of, having some, you know, building in some kind of accountability, creating uh, a plan an action, what, what, what actions are you going to take daily, weekly, monthly to hit whatever targets you have and compressing targets down from yearly targets to 12 week targets? Because here's the reality. I'm sure I, I would guess that everyone has experienced this. You set goals or targets for the year. You get off to a slow start and you think either consciously or unconsciously or subconsciously, well, I've got plenty of time to catch up. There's plenty of year left. I'll, I'll be able to catch up, right? I know I'm, I'm you know, I'm going off to a slow start here, but, but I'll be able to make it up. And then, and then something happens in the second quarter. You have a health scare. Something happens with family, whatever. And, and now we're two quarters in and we're, we're way behind, but we think, well, I've got six months left, right? I can still, you know, I can still make all of this happen. And, and part of the beauty of compressing it down is creating that sense of urgency that even if you don't hit the target, it, it, it's just a different sense of, it's just a different mental approach and, and, and sense of urgency that, that is brought to it. And I think the other big thing the, the journaling aspect, actually writing things down. I'll give an example of this morning. I'm a pretty avid, um, you know, I, I'm pretty obsessively, I, I work out obsessively, let's say. Not like unhealthily, but but like I, I work out six days a week, pretty much every week and, and most weeks, seven days a week. And I'm in pretty good shape. But one of the things that I am... Um, committing to this year for, for myself personally is getting stronger, actually physically stronger. And one of the reasons is I want to, I want to be an example for my boys. They want to get stronger. They're working out. They want to get bigger, faster, and stronger. And what better way for me to, um, you know, encourage them and, and actually also be able to hold my own with them uh, as they get stronger than for me to do the same. And so I've got a, a, a couple of primary exercises I do a number of different things, but I have a couple of primary exercises that I'm tracking to get stronger on. 
And the simple fact, the simple uh, task of just tracking that number means I'm way more likely to actually get stronger, right? Like if, I, if I'm documenting the process, uh, that alone just increases the likelihood uh, that, that I will make progress on it. So that journaling aspect and, and just writing things down and, and quite honestly, for my exercise, I'm not actually writing it down. I'm using, I'm just using the notes app on my phone. Like I wrote down this morning, one of my core strength um, things that I'm tracking is, is, is deadlifts and how much I can deadlift. And, and um, today I, you know, I, I texted or I, I put, put down what, what uh, I hit. And so my goal next Monday, cause Mondays are my heavy lifting days. Um, I, I put the, you know, now I have a target to beat next Monday. I'm going to try and beat that number next Monday, right? And so having that number that I'm not, and, and the importance of writing it down is not guessing. Oh, I think I did this this number last week. And then you you guess wrong, right? You know, so anyway. Um, and, and the last thing along those is, especially for business, is getting yourself to a point where, for example, what Shay shared is getting it to a math equation. That's when that's when your business will be unlocked for you. If you can get to the point where business is a math equation, I know if I need X amount of listing appointments or buyer consultations every week to hit my goal, that I, I have a math equation. That means I've got to make, uh, you know, I've got to generate X amount of new leads or I've got to send X amount of uh, um, uh, text messages to old leads, or I've got to do X amount of, you know, whatever that is, but boiling it down to a math equation. And as boring as that may seem, and as, uh, you know, as uncomfortable as that may be for you, if, uh, if you're not a math person, um, I'm telling you, it is, um, it is very freeing when you're able to do that, when you can you can boil things down to that, um, you know it, it can make all the difference in the world. So, there's no simpler thing to make life easier for you than to know you need. If you need X amount of listings, then you need Y amount of listing appointments, and to get those, you need X amount of calls to do it for people to answer and things like that. Once you do it, it actually is like a real job. You, you know, meet these quotas and the guessing game goes away and that roller coaster in your income goes away. You meet those goals, you'll get that income. You want to increase, add something to it. But like Josh was saying, there, it, it's imperative to do that and break it down granularly to be able to move forward and have a reliable income so you don't have those peaks and valleys. And how Shay arrives at those numbers is different than how I may arrive at those numbers, right? There's 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 multiple paths sure. to the end to the end result, right? That's that's one of the beauties of our business, and also the, the um, uh, you know the difficulties of our business is there's lots of ways to get to the end result. What you need to find is what works for you, what works for your personality, but also what works for you in your market what's going on in, in your geographic market, but also what's going on in the market, right? What and, and, and fitting all of that. And that's another great thing about the 12-week year is every 12 weeks, you have the opportunity to pivot and adjust if you need to, right? So you got to start somewhere. Zero to one is always the hardest. And then once you've got the thing moving, once you've got your, your you know, going in some direction, you can always course correct. You can always steer the thing and, 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 um, you know, adjust as necessary. So other questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, and, and quite honestly, um, you know, whether it relates to the topic of today, or if you just have something that you would like some, uh, some feedback or brainstorming around, we've got a great crowd. Uh, and so, you know, we certainly don't have to limit to today's topic. Um, you know, I, I, I love, um, you know, the, the mastermind effect here of, of, of taking problems, quote unquote, and, and trying to find possible solutions to those, um, you know, wh whether they be marketing problems or, or, or conundrums or client problems or conundrums, whatever the case may be. And if not, we may have uh, our shortest Monday marketing mastermind on session. Who is that? 
Go ahead. It's Hazel, it sounds good. And I'm really interested. And since I just turned 82, I will set up something for myself. Right on. You'll hear from we, me. We can get you uh, connected with Norm's uh, 12 week year. They start tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern. And in fact, uh, we used to do these huddles Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And the reason we um, stopped Tuesdays is to allow folks to go and participate in Norm's Express Success. And also, I still do the texting Tuesdays at 1030 a.m. Eastern. And we, uh, I also, uh, we always keep them to a half an hour or less for the same reason, to allow folks to hop on over, hop on over to uh, Norm's Express Success. I, I, I may not be very good at the... Uh running or walking or riding the bicycle at this age <laughs> well that's okay okay always remember it's your goal right it's your goal so whatever it is you know we can work towards achieving it so congratulations thank you <laughs> right on anyone else questions comments thoughts josh, ideas? josh harvey how you doing yeah good morning yeah good morning i i Got in about 15 minutes late, but uh, is there any financial obligation uh, to sign up for this? So for folks in our sales organization, no. Outside of that, um, th there are uh, there is somewhat. And quite honestly, Norm, I'm not even sure exactly what that looks like. But Harvey, I'll make the introduction after, after we wrap up to explore that. OK, thanks. You bet. OK. Other questions, comments, thoughts or ideas? Uh, yeah, one more ahead, yeah. I've been I've been asked by a couple people to go back to doing uh, the script um, role play and objection handling and stuff. And with my schedule, I think I can open that up again. Okay. Uh, will you can we kind of put our heads together and figure out uh, time to put that to get back together? I'll make a note to uh, to give you a buzz or text you. Yep, we'll definitely figure that out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tim, um, Tim, it's in the, I send out a weekly email every uh, Sunday night or Monday morning. And uh, the link is in the weekly email, Tim. And if not, we'll, if, if, if you can't find it, um, let us know. We'll uh, just email Mike. Mike's got the information to, uh, to join Norm's session. Uh, some housekeeping items and then we can let everybody go if, if there are no other uh, questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas. So texting Tuesday tomorrow morning, 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 12.30 Eastern, or well, Norms Express Success at 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. 12.30 Eastern is our big group coaching and our private team suite for our organization. And then we're back on these huddles uh, Wednesday and Thursday. I am not going to be available. Well, I am most likely not going to be available on Thursday, so I may need someone to uh, to take the lead on Thursday. And then uh, Friday, we have uh, Pat Hayes' Freedom Friday and um, Larry White's Wealth Building Mastermind. Um, Ashley, texting Tuesday is 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Texting Tuesday is 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Uh, those are live streamed in uh, on my YouTube page, Josh Shane Lake Coaching. They're uh, live streamed on Facebook. I live stream a bunch of different places. And then the... the uh, the replays are available immediately after the sessions, uh, the way the live streaming function works. Um, you also have Thursday with uh, Kathy Ryan. Yes, we have uh, cash offer coaching on Thursdays with Kathy Ryan at yeah. noon Eastern. Yeah, 100%. Right. So if you were a guest today, if you are a guest today and you would like to get access to the uh, this recording and additional resources, links, et cetera, mentioned, just get back to whoever invited you. And the way we have that set up is that when you do that, you will get access to today's information and all of the past sessions, the recordings, the replays, the recommended resources, et cetera. So if you missed a past session, you'll get access to that as well. And um, next week, next week, I believe on uh, our Monday Marketing Mastermind, we'll be talking about um, how to help and serve downsizing or uh, right-sizing baby boomers and empty nesters uh, in your market. And that should be a, a great session. Um, that is a niche, 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 I don't know, 
tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Anyway, that that is uh, that is a niche that I've been talking about for a while, but it continues to kind of evolve the way we're approaching that. So I'm excited to share sort of the uh, the very best uh, practices that, uh, and what's working right this minute as far as that audience goes. So stay tuned for that one next week. Isabel. Yes, hi. Good know, morning. Good morning. Um, you know, my sister right now is in the process of um, calling for sale by owners and expireds. And I was telling her about finding a way, an efficient way to do that because you were talking about this last week that um, I'm wondering whether we should be doing something else before calling them, um, uh, like emailing or texting them first before calling them. Um, so I don't want her to be wasting her time on the phone, calling and calling if people don't answer. I just wanted to get your um, your ideas on that. So I'm a little lost. Yeah, I mean, I, I am, this is where Shay and I differ. Shay, um, Shay spends a lot of time on the phone. I try to prevent, pretend that my phone only takes incoming calls. Um, and so I only call people if they're expecting my call. So they've scheduled an appointment um, or they've taken some action, which means that I should probably call this person, right? That, you know, they, they requested a showing or, you know, whatever. To be more efficient with those audiences, I'll share my thoughts and then certainly I would love to hear others. I think number one, you have to have a unique value proposition that you're offering them. If you're just call, if they're, if you're just reaching out to them, whether it is calling, emailing, or texting, and you're just taking the very same approach as everyone else, um, I, I, I personally, I wouldn't even bother. Um, and in fact, I had a, I was having a, an email exchange with another um, agent over the last few days, uh, and he was saying, you know. Uh, he was asking for help with something similar that he had reached out to a hundred for sale by owner and expired listings. And he had gotten like two or three appointments. And I said, well, what are you, you know, what, what's the conversation? What are you offering them? And uh, quite honestly, it was, there was nothing really of value there. Right. Um, so having something of value, for example, if you send a text message and or email and it says, I've got an offer on your property. When would be a good time for me to review it with you, either in person or on Zoom? That's very different than saying, um, you know, I see your, your house is listed for sale by owner. Um, when, you know, how long before you're, you're ready to list it with the right real estate agent? And I know that's like a really, really old, outdated script, but... There are still coaches and, and, and brokers, et cetera, recommending agents do stuff like that. So finding a way to have a different conversation, I think, is, is critical. Um, and then, you know, presenting that unique value proposition in every one of those modalities. Um, and I would only call the ones that you really, really want. But you're not calling them to just have a conversation. You're calling them to let them know about whatever the unique value proposition is. Um, but I would that th that we've got a lot of folks on here with a lot of experience, and I would love to hear other thoughts or ideas. And and Isabel, feel free to clarify as well. This is Hazel, and I agree. I've been in business for 20 years. I do not call the customers just to see if they want to list their house ever. And yep. I've had two people call me this week wanting to know if I had list my, want to list my house. Yep. Respectfully, I do things much different like Josh. Totally. Said. Yep. I call the people. I call the people. I ask them the questions, and it makes me a lot of money. It doesn't matter what way you're doing it as long as you have consistency. Like Josh said, you can't call to, you know, quote, unquote, check in or harass people. You have to have something to say something different than the last 25 people that called them but i count the no's i've never received a 38th consecutive no on the phone and you can tell me no 37 times as long as you give me ten thousand dollars on the 38th time i'll take that every time i think i do kind of a hybrid whether i call or because sometimes i may do a lead in text with a valuable offer, but then sometimes I'm just in the, that mode where I'm like, I can't, I'd rather just 
pick up the phone and get a direct or instant response than taking my time to um, text. Even though what I'm texting may be a value, I do tend to get better responses when I text though. I would say that. Um, but yeah, I think the mindset is everything because I would tell myself, hey, this call is worth $20,000. Hey, me reaching out to this person is I would work out the commission or the potential commission. And so I kind of do a mind play with myself to get in that mindset. I, I, so two, two, two great points that I want to I want to piggyback on off of. Number one, understanding the value of every conversation and or every person in your in, in, in your database lead or otherwise if you have that context it can totally change your perspective about what you're doing in other words for for let's say cold lead generation facebook and instagram ads let's say if you know that for every 100 leads like that you generate at least one of them is going to turn into a closing mm -hmm. and that closing will equal blank amount. And let's just make it, we'll make it real round numbers here just to keep it simple. For every hundred leads, I'm going to get a $10,000 commission. That means that the value of every one of those leads is a hundred dollars. So if you, if it costs you $10 to generate those 100, you're, you're getting a 10 to one return. The problem that tricks us up with that is we're in a, a business with a long sales cycle. And so being patient enough to realize that ROI, but apply it to this conversation. If you know, for example, Shay knows in his business. So now, now this is also about knowing your numbers, not just industry averages, your numbers. Shea, uh, Shea knows that he's never gotten more than 38 no's in a row. So Shay knows if I make 40 phone calls, I'm getting a client, which means if that client is worth 10,000, I'm going to, I'm going to use my calculator because math, doing math in my head live here is never good. But if it takes uh, 40 calls and, and he knows that he, it's impossible for him to go more than 40 calls and not get a client, that means that each phone call he makes or has is worth $250 to his business. 10,000 divided by 40. Now, so that's the math component. The other thing that, that Adele said that, that got my brain going is if she feels like your, I think it's your sister, right, Isabel? Yeah, if she feels like she's wasting her time, which I get 100%, people don't answer the phone, okay? I'm not, I, I do think that does vary by market, okay? Like, I think there are certain markets where the, the pickup rate is lower than other markets, right? Which again, comes down to knowing your numbers. And let's say you don't have a unique value proposition. The way you can switch that around is simply texting and emailing a, you know, when do you have a, a, a couple minutes to chat about your property at blank address? So you're at least getting some engagement and getting a commitment so that you're increasing the likelihood that when you make the phone call, there'll actually be someone answering. And as shocking as this is, for sale by owners who are trying to sell their home, they still only answer about 10 to 15% of the time. Which is, I mean, it's one of the reasons why they need a real estate agent to help them, but whatever, you know. Um, uh, so that would be a simple way that maybe you, you spin it on its head a little bit where you put it out to them. And you, what you're going to get is, is people, well, a quick chat about what, do you have a buyer? You know, what, what's the deal here? Right. But at least it creates engagement and gives you the opportunity to present a value proposition or to justify why you'd like to have the conversation. So other thoughts or ideas sure. as well. You know, and do you, do you recommend retargeting them through Facebook ads? Uh, who? Uh, like for sale by owners and expire? Um, with something no. of value? I, I mean, for the general population, no. If you have a very strong, unique value proposition, maybe. 
Um, but in most cases, those audiences are so small that you can't really get any traction and it doesn't end up being a worthwhile pursuit. That, and once you look up someplace like for sale by owner or anything, Facebook will absolutely inundate you with that nonsense. So you're lost on noise. Yeah. There was somebody else that was chiming in there and then I that was Norm. It's, it's Norm. I was just going to say that I, I like the touch uh, aspect of um, when you're making the phone calls or the text messages or, or you're sending an email, uh, knowing that uh, the average person, when you reach out to contact them, it's going to take between seven and 14 touches before they're ever going to respond to you. That's just the average. Okay. You know, again, it goes back to Josh, knowing your numbers, what are your numbers and in each area is different, right? So if you take the approach that you, you want to make a phone call, that's fine. Make a phone call, leave a voicemail, that's exactly the same thing that you're going to send to them as a text message immediately after you 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 make the phone call and then send them and then send them a, an, an email all at the same time. Now that's giving you three touches almost immediately, which increases your chance that you're going to get a return phone call or some communication. Now, if you're using a good CRM system, we're fortunate we have KB Core. It's very easy to be able to go into that system, make the phone call, hit the button that sends the text message, and hit the button that sends a uh, that, that sends them a, an email. So you've made those you've made those three contacts in a very 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 short period of time. Then you go on to the next one. And as we were talking through this, it, you know, the other way you could approach it is she makes the calls. She doesn't get the connection. She follows up with the text and email that says, hey, I'm trying to reach you about your property at X address. When is a good time for us to have a quick chat? Yeah. Right. So if, if you're going to make the calls, just make it be worthwhile. Right. Don't just like don't just like go through the, the motions just to say, well, I called all of them. There was 100 of them. I called all of them. Right. If you're going, it would be better to go an inch wide and a mile deep versus a mile wide and an inch deep, right? So it would be better to select, if there was a bottleneck or a restriction there, it would be better to select 25 of them and go deeper, meaning a call, a text, an email versus just have a hundred of them, call them, you're gonna get a bunch of voicemails and very few that ever call you back. Hey, Josh, I would also suggest that if you're going to do that and, and you're gonna make that, that distinction, take a notepad, write down what it is that you're doing, write down the actual script that you're using, pay attention to how many of them that you make each each way and do like A-B testing and figure out what's working best for you. And you might want to tweak up your, your message a little bit because your message might be a little bit wrong. So if you look at that and then you can, you can you again, what are we doing? We're, we're paying attention to our numbers and what it is that we're doing to try to get those accomplished, right? So it's a very uh, scientific way to after the end of the, the day or the, the week or whatever, to go back and look at it and say, this didn't work as well as this. So how, how do I move forward and do better next week? Uh, Mike, I'm curious how, to, uh, how you respond to people when they hear you say you have a cash offer. And Mike was actually the one, the, the agent that I was mentioning that we were having back and forth. Well, first, Mike, we're not, this isn't about express offers with, with EXP. Um, that's great, it's awesome. Uh, my experience is their buy boxes are just not, um, you're, you're going to get more often than not, the seller is going to be offended by the offer that's made. We use a different cash offer platform that we're able to get offers that are much closer and in many cases at market value for, uh, for whether it be expired for sale by owners or other likely sellers. So, um, when you say how you respond to people when they hear you say you have a call, well, I don't know how because I don't know what you're, can you clarify what you mean there? And maybe Mike's not on here anymore. I don't know. Um, I should have double checked that. Oh, no, Mike, you are there. So whether, you, yeah, so whether, I mean, feel free to open your line or if you want to post it there, can you be more specific about what the question is or 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 what what objection you're trying to overcome? <laughs> Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yep, yep. Awesome, and totally appreciate this. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just uh, mostly just kind of thinking of scripting it. Maybe you probably have it out there, so I don't want to necessarily waste time if it's out there, but more, I'm just kind of thinking, you know, I get some responses back from people. Uh, you, I say, hey, I got this program. I got this for you. I create that dialogue. I create that conversation. 
um, that's generating great responses. My my next thought on that really was just how to respond to them from that point forward. And so I, there are different scenarios. I was just using this cash offer situation like yours. Sounds like you have your own specific program, though, that you would have a whole nother response than I might have. I, well, and, and quite honestly, what depending on the audience size and the audience target, we may already actually have a cash offer. So we actually, you know, that's a unique value proposition and a unique and different conversation that you can have with a seller. I've got an off. You were wanting to sell. I have an offer on your property. Um, so that is definitely a differentiator. But sorry, I don't mean I didn't mean to. Uh... No, no, I totally hear you. I, and I'm thinking to myself, I, I, I don't have a means of just creating a cash offer i mean obviously i have you know access to express offers and you're not wrong the buy boxes suck um but at least it's there so i can have right. i can actually say that i can maybe i potentially might be able to you know have a cash offer uh so uh i i i i, I, what I probably just gonna need to do is just kind of figure out what kind of responses i'm actually getting and then so i can be more specific but i'm trying to figure out these people come back and say, yeah, let me see the offer. And I'm not sure where to go with that. Yeah. So that that's where you say, depending on what you're using and how you're using it. Awesome. Thanks. Um, you know, thanks for responding and for your interest. Uh, usually it takes me about 42 or 48 to 72 hours to get the cash offer for you. Um, so um, let me get your property submitted and I will be in touch later this week. And then the follow-up is, hey, um, you know, I've got the cash offer or cash offer options for you. Um, would you prefer to re review them in person? I'm happy to pop by for a few minutes. Or do you prefer that we hop on Zoom to review them? Because I would not send them whatever you're, however you're generating those offers, I would not send them to them yeah. without the opportunity to be reviewing them with them because they could misunderstand. Um and you are the messenger in that situation. And when they respond negatively, oh, you know, I would never sell it for that price. I totally understand, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Mo many of the folks that we talk to feel exactly the same as you. The other option or another option for you to uh, keep more of your equity would be whether it's a traditional listing or we've got um, a, a, what we call our home boss online offer platform. Like there, there's ways that you can then pivot, um, you know, pivot around. But if you just send it to them and you don't have that opportunity to read their, you know, their body language or their reaction and be able to pivot, then, you, you know, you're, you're just losing, losing the business for sure. So, yeah, so you're saying go ahead and present what you may have for what you've told sure. them, but do it in such a way that now you can be there and you, you're, you're almost kind of representing like, here's what I would, you know, here's what we can do. Here's what we can't do. But you're building and, and I would make sure that it, it's very clear that this is one of the options we offer homeowners like yourself. It's certainly not the only one. And we fully recognize that these offers only work for a small percentage of the population. Most folks want to want to uh, you know are not in an urgent dire need uh, and would prefer to keep more of their equity. If that's the case for you, here are other options we can explore, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, when the time is right, right? But what what this affords you is the opportunity to be the first one that they meet with. Yeah, and we know that seventy to eighty percent are only going to meet with one person, so. If you can do a good job of building relationship and rapport and make sure that they know that, hey, I'm just a messenger of this offer. This isn't intended to insult you or whatever. Um, and, and these are the other options we have for you that can help you keep more of your equity. Um, that, that's to me the benefit of, of, of using that and having a different conversation um, with whether it's for sale by owners, for rent by owners, expireds, or other likely to list homeowners in your market. Hope that helps. Yeah, yeah you bet. And, uh, and, and uh, I saw your email. Uh, we do these every Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern. And we, uh, we do Monday Marketing Masterminds every Monday. 
and we have different topics every Monday. Next week, we're going to be talking about uh, helping and serving uh, downsizing uh, baby boomers and empty nesters, and, and probably the week after that. Oh, you know what? Next Monday is Martin Luther King Day. Oh, I forgot about that, and I, I think we have a completely chaotic day. So that may not be, it may not be until the following Monday. Um, our family calendar that day is literally just games and practices and every, anyway uh, so stay tuned on that but the next session we have will be on that and and we'll also be doing one upcoming very soon on reverse mortgages which is another way uh, educating helping to educate yourself so that when you are you know creating those opportunities that you can best help and serve and educate that market right because you know that may be the best situation and and the best um uh the best answer for them or, or, or the, or the best scenario for them may be to stay in the house and do a reverse mortgage. Right. So having that, that knowledge base, Susan, you've had your hand up for a while. I'm sorry for making you wait. That's okay. Um, I just have, I feel uncomfortable saying I've got an offer for you because normally they come right back at you saying, well, how did you get in and to see it? So I don't feel comfortable with that route. Um, I usually try and get an email or um, some extra contact if I'm constantly getting a no. And what I want to send out to them is um, a do-it-yourself little book, um, mm -hmm. do-it-yourself house sale, which is showing all the sort of different things that they have to do, which makes it almost impossible for them to feel comfortable totally continuing on to yep, sell it yep. themselves. Yep. So, so I would either text them that I've... Uh, I believe uh, that I've sent this through a PDF or um, I will drop it off to them personally if I got the appointment. And that way I can take a picture of the house and then I can reprogram my uh, listing presentation with a, with a picture of their own house in the front of the listing presentation. Yeah, so leading with value. I think, you know, the, the, the bigger picture there is having things that you can offer that are of value to um, to the person. So taking it back to Isabel's conversation. Uh, maybe you're just trying to reach them because you want to share some item of value to help them sell it on their own, right? If it's a for sale by owner, right? And with the the idea being that maybe it will help help them. And if so, and they sell it on their own, if nothing else, um, you've you know you've maybe opened the door to them being referring you other business, or you could have a conversation uh, about the fact that you know, hey, Mister Mister for sale by owner. There's going to be only one buyer for your property. Um, if if there are other buyers who are interested, I would love the opportunity to help and serve them, whatever it is. Uh, yeah. But there's going to be a certain percentage that when they see, as Susan mentioned, when they see this is everything that a you know there there's a there's a um, there's a portion of the population that really has no idea all of the things that we do to bring value to the uh, to the transaction, right? And so. You can outline that for them so they can come to the conclusion themselves at some point. Yeah, this probably, you know, isn't worth the hassle, right? Or, or I, you know, I probably should hire a professional to help me with this. Yes, exactly. Yeah, love it. Great stuff. Great share. Thank you. Um, and oh, also, so if, but so the, the one thing I will um, mention there, that, you know, that the, I don't like presenting an offer with them not knowing how you got the information. Uh, an approach for that too is, you know, hey, I'd like to put it together some cash offer options for you. Um, and this would more be to follow up with um, folks that maybe have already requested a cash offer, right? So this is more on the lead gen front. But a simple way to get an appointment is, hey, for me to get you the strongest offer possible, um, I just need some pictures of the exterior and the interior of the, of the property. Could you either email me some or I'm happy to pop by and take some? Should only take five or 10 minutes, right? Love so that it, idea. Yeah, I mean, it just creates the opportunity to, um, A, if they send them, great, right? Like they're, you're, 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 you know, if they, if they send you those pictures, two things are happening. Number one, they trust you enough to send you the pictures. Number two, like they're pretty serious, right? Like they're, if they're going to send you pictures, um, you know, for some people that's a piece of cake, but for some people that's, you know, it's kind of annoying. You got to go find them or take them or whatever, and you got to upload them or you send them from your phone, right? Like they're, 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 they're doing things that are, you know, tying them to you potentially. And if not, if they can't, um, it gives you the opportunity to come out and, and take pictures. And then, you know, you can 
treat it like a pre-listing appointment kind of, right? You're just building relationship and rapport and um, and and they're going to have questions while you're there. I guarantee it. They're going to ask you things and it allows you to position yourself as uh, as an expert or the expert uh, for them. So I love that idea. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. All right. We're well past the hour. Uh, this was there were some great follow up questions and, and pivoting. I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, once again, I'll mention if you would like the the replay of today's session and past sessions, just get back to wherever invited you. We've got it set up in a free members area for you. There's no, you know, there's no shenanigans. No, it's it's free for you. Um, I will have to update my entire group and others. I don't think I will be able to be here for for next Monday. Uh, so most likely it'll be two Mondays from now. Our next Monday marketing mastermind, and uh, the topic uh, um, on the calendar is uh, helping and serving. Uh, baby boomers and and uh, and downsizing or right sizing empty nesters. Thanks so much for all the participation today. This was wonderful. Um, check out this book, and I didn't even mention it. It's a super easy read. I mean, literally, you could read it in an evening. Uh, it's very easy, short read. Some very powerful um, principles in there. And if you want some hands on help with it, with Norm's Express Success Coaching, just get back to whoever invited you and we can get you more information about that as well. Hope you all make it a wonderful week and I'll see many of you throughout the week, either on texting Tuesday huddles, et cetera. Uh, and for those in my group, bring back wins on Wednesday, bring back wins on Wednesday. Take care and talk soon.